Let's look at one last example before we move on. So here we're given the second derivative of a function, and we want to recover the original function. Um, and this time you'll see that we're given two initial values, right? Um, value for f prime at 0 and a value for f at 0. Okay? And we want, to, we want to recover the function. So the way this works, is with antiderivatives, right? So we say, OK, so f prime of t, we need an antiderivative for cosine. We know that an antiderivative for cosine is sine. But of course, there might be a constant. Now I'm going to call this constant c1, because I know that by the time I get to f of t, I'm going to have to take the antiderivative again, and there's going to be a second constant of integration. And we want to give them different names because they're probably going to be different numbers, right? So we get to here. Now, uh, there's two choices here on how you proceed. You can go straight to f of t and then put in the values, um, or you can put in the values as you go. Uh, most people like to kind of solve as we go, but let's just kind of do it, do it the other way first. So then we say, okay, let's, you know, let's do the antiderivative again. f of t is equal to? Well, the derivative of sine, we've seen that one. It's a negative cos, antiderivative, right? Antiderivative of sine is negative cos, because working backwards, right? Uh, remember the nice thing about antiderivatives, you can always check your work. Just take the derivative. Derivative of cos is negative sine times negative 1 gives me positive sine. All right? c1 times t plus c2, right? Some new constant, c2. Okay. Now we plug in our values, right? So f prime of 0 is 3, but it's also equal to sine of 0 plus c1, right? So that tells me that c1 is equal to 3. OK. Now, again, like I said, I could have done that before I bothered with this antiderivative, and then I would have been able to say, OK, so f prime is, is sine t plus 3, so now I'm, I'm this far. I know that f of t is cosine of t, negative cosine of t, plus 3t, and we still don't know what c2 is. Okay? But we do know that f of 0 should be minus cos 0 plus 3 times 0 plus c2. Okay, So this works out to minus 1 plus c2. And this is supposed to add up to give me 5. right? And that tells me that c2 is going to have to be 5. Sorry, 6, right? Add the 1. 6. Right? Okay, so that means that we can completely describe our function. f of t is negative cosine t plus 3t plus 6, and then you have it. Right? Um, now, there's a, uh, there's a variation on this problem that we, we don't look at in this, in this course or in this book. Um, but you might encounter, if you're, if you're moving on and looking at some differential equations material, um, in addition to initial value problems, there's also something called a boundary value problem, right? Where maybe you know that your function is defined on some closed interval and you have the values of the two endpoints, right? So instead of being given values for f prime of 0 and f of 0, you might have been told, say, f of 0 equals 5 and f of maybe, maybe it's defined up until, say, um, pi, right? And f of pi is equal to 2, right? And you're given those two values. Um, those problems are, are a little bit different because then you don't have the option of solving for this c1 right away at the, uh, at the first derivative because both of those values have to do with f. So then you'd have to come down to here, get that function with the c1 and the c2, and then you'd plug in your values, right? So you'd plug in f of 0, um, and you would get minus 1 plus c2. So fortunately, you'd still be able to find c2 in this case, right? And then you'd plug in pi, and you get 1 plus c1 times pi plus your c2, right? And then you're able to solve for c1. Um, so that's a different type of problem that you might encounter. Um, 
but we're not going to work through those examples because you're not going to encounter them immediately. You might see them um, in a later course.